When Eddie Hall completed his 500 kilogram deadlift, we saw blood come pouring out of his nose and many people discussed just how dangerous this lift was. The Beast himself just released a YouTube video taking us behind the scenes with an additional look at just how dangerous and serious this lift actually was on his health. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Eddie Hall's 500 kilogram deadlift and some of the information he talked about in his recent video. We'll specifically review the physiology of the Valsalva maneuver and why it caused different effects on Hall's body, as well as talk about the fact that he lost part of his vision after the lift. Make sure and go subscribe if you guys like learning about this type of content and want to stay up to date with my future videos, and let's get started. The Valsalva maneuver is a very important part of any power lifter's routine. During this maneuver, somebody forces expiration, but against a closed epiglottis, meaning you're basically building up all this pressure inside your chest and inside your abdomen. It's essentially like you're bearing down. This is necessary during a heavy power lift because if you don't Valsalva, then you don't have enough stability throughout your core to protect your spine and your chest and abdomen. But there's multiple stages of the Valsalva maneuver that can have various effects on the body like we saw with Hall. Right here as Hall began his lift, we immediately saw blood coming out of his nose. This happened within the first few seconds of what was overall about a 10 second period of his deadlift. There's four different stages to the Valsalva maneuver. The solid line in this graph represents the blood pressure and the dotted line represents a person's heart rate. During the first few seconds of a Valsalva, there's an increase in the blood pressure within a person's body. That sudden increase of force by bearing down and squeezing your intrathoracic pressure squeezes on your lungs and causes the blood in your lungs to be pushed into the heart. This increase in blood in the heart increases the stroke volume, which allows the heart to squeeze more blood out, which temporarily raises the blood pressure. This little spike in blood pressure is what causes Hall's nose to start to bleed, and even talked in the end of the video about how he was having bleeding from his tear ducts. There's a region of blood supply in your nose called Kesselbach's plexus, and this is the area that's often implicated when someone has a nosebleed. It's all these tiny, small little capillaries, which are single layer blood vessels that get ruptured due to this high, sudden increase in blood pressure. Now, if we continue on to stage two of the Valsalva maneuver, this is where we start to see that drop in the blood pressure. Whenever you're increasing your intrathoracic pressure, what that does is it compresses your venous system and limits the amount of blood that's being returned up to your heart. Your vena cava is a very flexible, floppy blood vessel, and so whenever the pressure increases in your chest, it prevents that blood from being able to flow from the rest of your body into your thorax and get to the heart. This causes the output of the heart and the stroke volume to decrease and the blood pressure to subsequently fall. This decrease in blood pressure peaks out here around 10 seconds and that was about the duration of Eddie Hall's lift. Now thankfully our body is really smart and we have something called the autonomic nervous system that helps to regulate our blood pressure and our heart rate. If your blood pressure is really low, your body tries to compensate by increasing your heart rate. Vice versa, if your blood pressure is really high, then your body will reflexively decrease the heart rate. So here you can see in phase two, the person's heart rate is beginning to increase because of that drop in blood pressure. If we were checking Eddie's heart rate during this sort of second half of his lift, we could see his heart rate start to steadily increase because of how there's not enough blood getting back into his heart to then be pumped to the rest of his body. As phase two continues on, eventually you get some constriction of the peripheral vasculature, which causes the blood pressure to start to transiently rise back up to compensate. Moving on to phase three, once that intrathoracic pressure is suddenly released, now all this blood suddenly rushes back into that vasculature that was previously constricted, and now you have a shunting of blood away from the periphery, causing another little bit of decrease in the blood pressure. When Eddie passed out here, it was a little bit delayed after he actually completed the lift. Eddie here is wearing this suit that helps provide additional compression to his body, and it looked like right after they pulled that suit off, that suddenly released a lot of the intrathoracic and abdominal pressure, which causes his blood pressure to drop, which then causes him to pass out. Finally, in phase four of the Valsalva, everything begins to equilibrate and get back to normal as the body regulates the blood pressure and the heart rate. Now, the next thing that Hall talked about in his video is that he was having some loss of vision sort of in the center of his eye. He described seeing like a black spot right in the middle of his vision after the lift was completed. This was likely something we call Valsalva retinopathy. This occurs when blood vessels in the back of the eye are ruptured because of this sharp increase in blood pressure at the beginning of the Valsalva. We can see this in people who are weightlifting or have bouts of serious coughing that increases that intrathoracic pressure. And the majority of times it resolves spontaneously with no long-term effects on vision. The little blood vessels in the back of the eye are super thin, just like we see in the nose, and are susceptible to being ruptured just like when Eddie had his nosebleed. So likely what was causing him to lose part of his vision was that he was actually having bleeding in the back of his eye 
that was distorting his visual fields. Now there is one spot in the video where Hall mentioned bleeding in the brain. We didn't hear anything else about him having a stroke, but a stroke would be considered bleeding in the brain. It certainly is possible that by increasing that intrathoracic pressure and that spike in blood pressure with his lift, that there could have been some rupture in some of the blood vessels kind of deep inside the brain. But without further information from Hall, I wouldn't necessarily label this as him having had a stroke. But either way, doing a lift like this is certainly a serious risk to the body. Part of Hall's training to do a lift like this involves how to breathe properly and perform that Valsalva to try to minimize the harmful effects on his heart and on his body. So next time you're at the gym working out and you bear down and do one of those Valsalvas, keep this in mind in terms of what actually is happening inside your body whenever you go through a lift like this. It's all related to how our heart and blood vessels work to control the blood pressure and the heart rate to try to maximize the amount of blood getting to the critical tissues in our body. Thank you as always for watching everybody. Let me know any questions or comments you have below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.